So if those of you who are here with us can um, type into the Google chat comment tracker over comment um, comment on the side of the Google Hangout page, if you can um, just add in your, your comments and say hello, so then that we know who's, who's actually there. That would be totally helpful, because this is the first time that we've done this. Um, don't quite know how it all works. <laughs> don't don't know, and it's all brand new. And so, um, chats over here are good. Say hello to everybody, because today we're talking about um, the power of the goddess. Is talking about um, bouncing back from burnout, and I have um, Curly with me. She is one of the uh, uh, power of the goddess uh, facilitators and creators as well, and we'll have one of our other. Um, Power of the Goddess creators, Rebecca, will be joining us uh, too. So we're going to be talking about um, bouncing back from burnout. Um, but but really, how do you get to that point where you actually need to bounce back? Like, what causes burnout in the first place? How do you get to it? You know, I've been there from personal experience. Um, Carl has been, Rebecca's been there. So many women have been there. And there's Becky. Hey, Becky's with us. So many women have been to that place of burnout. Um, maybe didn't know that that's what it was. Just figuring, oh, I'm I'm just tired. I'm exhausted. You know, I I've just got some stuff going on. Maybe if I just you know have a nap or whatever. But if you're consistently um, saying, yeah, I've got you know, I've got to take a nap, and it lasts all day. Then we're talking about something a little bit different. So we're going to talk a little bit about like what leads up to burn, what actually leads up to burnout. So um, Curly, Becky, let's hear from from you two. These two women are are part of the Power of the Goddess team, the facilitation team, and we've got you know a lot of subjects that we're going to talk about over the, the coming weeks leading up to our power of the goddess retreat and everything that we're doing at the retreat um, will be pre you know uh, sort of we'll have a pre discussion of things that of why someone would come to the retreat in the first place so so we're um, just going to talk a little bit about like curly in your experience like what led up to to burnout for you I know for me it was constantly um, doing, like being in productivity mode, like constantly like taking the opportunities because, oh, the opportunities are here and if I don't take the opportunity now, it's never going to be here again. And and not ever giving my, myself time to um, just really take care of, to take care of me. Absolutely, Margie, and that's a fabulous introduction, first of all, and I'm so excited. I'm dying to know who else is on listening in and to obviously, so re really do introduce yeah. yourselves, that would be so wonderful. Um, but yeah, for me, I think the big, the reason why this is such a fantastic thing to talk about as women is because... First of all, as women, we can be extremely powerful. We can be the strongest link in any household, organization, group, you name it, yeah. right? Women can be that strongest link. But actually, you know what? We can be our own worst enemies because we are so strong. And we focus yeah. so well on out there, don't we, on everybody else. And even those of us that at times say, you know what, I don't care, I'm just focused on the job or something. And you know what, to an extent we do still. The important point is we're focused on out there, whether it's a job, and of you know, a, a task, an achievement, a report, our children, whatever it be. And this is, I think, a classic um thing that can lead to burnout but let hey let's be really honest and let's be tremendously practical here who right. doesn't have to focus on the world around them right how many people can honestly say do you know what i can take any day off i any day i like off mm. and i can go to the spa or i have the budget to go and do what i need to do to totally self-care it's um this is not the way the world works so that's why this is a really exciting topic and I think you know this is one of the 
I, I mean, I remember the day that you and I were talking through the schedule for the retreat, and I was, I, I don't think you saw this, Marjean, actually, because you were talking, um, but at one point, I looked at my other screen over here where the schedule was, and I was talking to you over there, and I thought, oh my God, if I wasn't involved in this, I'd be like, what can I sell, or what can I do to get myself there? This is incredibly exciting. It's exciting because it's not fully completely about learning mode or completely about tasks yeah. and things. It's actually truly about me or the person that's going, right? And that's the thing about burnout. For me, it's it, it, it was a thing um, of where I was flying high, I was doing everything right, I was everybody's best person to call on, right. um, and I was my own worst enemy for that reason, because I was being too good at everything, and I was being too nice, and everybody found me approachable and helpful, and um, I was getting the things that I said I was going to do done. What they didn't realize is that I was going hours and hours over time and this, that, and the other to get them done, to meet every one of those extraordinary promises, yeah. you know. And so for me, burnout is a, 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 such an important topic because, you know, whether it's burn, burnout to the point where you're completely exhausted and on your back, or whether it's burnout at the end of a single day and you're not at the complete end of your tether, it still has the same effect on you. It will, you know, for all of us, it will affect our health, it will affect our emotions, our enjoyment of life. And let's face it, the purpose of life is to be what you really need to be, really enjoy every yeah. single moment, essence, right? Because I don't know about you, but I can get excited about the silliest little things and really enjoy them. Like, there's a gra there's an absolutely amazing sunset about to happen at some point, and I'm like, <gasps> <laughs> <laughs> so I think this is a great topic for that reason. Yeah. Yeah. So Bex, we were just, you know, telling everybody like what what led up to our own personal experience with with burnout, like, and you know why it's so important to talk about it and to address it, you know, because it's one of those things that when I don't know about about YouTube, but when I was going through it, I I didn't want anyone to know. Like I did not. Well, first of all, I didn't realize that's what was happening, because I just kept denying that there was anything, you know, really serious. Seriously going on, um, so I didn't want anybody to know. So I didn't really, you know, kind of until I was at that point of total desperation that I didn't share it with anybody. I think this is common. Yeah. Yeah, because because you don't really. I I know um, in my experience of burnout, I was just. Um, working so hard everybody called me superwoman I was yeah. everything to my friends I single mom I was running up and I was driving about three four hundred miles a week running around after everybody I was writing my book I was creating workshops I was running workshops I was uh, and I was like Full on exercising every day, like <laughs> you know, I was super. Yes. I, I saw myself a bit like that as well, I think. And um, it was like that was my reputation. If if you needed something done, I was the go-to person. I could get something done for you. Anything, yeah. nothing was too hard to do. And I think when I um when I actually burnt out it, it happened it was quite an experience for me because um, I didn't get it straight away and it, it was literally like in the middle of the night I had a crack in the middle of my head I woke up it was so loud and I was like oh, I thought I was paralyzed I was like just lying mm. there and I was like breathe and I, I breathed in and as I breathed in every bone in my body seemed to move and realign itself in some way and it was like intense and I was in the middle of a teacher training at the time so I, I kind of speak because nobody that sort of thing had happened to anybody before 
right. that I that I knew and I spoke to a couple of my girlfriends and they were like no I don't really know what that is so I kind of shelved it for the week of the teacher training but then just everything after that started unraveling in a really big way I think I am um, I, I felt like I couldn't trust anyone I was really right. anxious I was like, I didn't know what I was supposed to be doing, or it was like this real big shift for me of like, um, and all I knew was that I kind of had to rest, and I had enough mm. faith in myself that that's what I needed to do, and I spent pretty much three months in nearly in bed the whole time, yeah. just like recuperating and... Um, readjusting to this new way of being and uh, yeah, it was a little bit scary but yeah. I, I kind of had faith that you know I've been calling that on my whole thing was transformation 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 <laughs> I think right. I'm gonna have transformation the biggest transformation that I can have and when I got it I was like oh okay <laughs> right yeah <laughs> <laughs> I can yeah, I can relate to that one. It's like, oh, I'm I'm ready to learn and to grow and and you know, next thing I know, I'm laying flat on my back in bed for a year, you know, <laughs> going, what's happening here? I didn't that like I can't be this. I have to get up. I have to exercise. I have to go. I have to do something. And and like some days it was just hard enough just getting up to to go and um, brush my teeth. Mm. You know, it's like I couldn't even like drag myself to the bathroom to have a shower or brush my teeth because that's like I was just that exhausted. Yeah. I was that exhausted. You know, and and yeah, it's like it's. I think it's it's part of it. You know, is like that that whole concept of like I oh I am superwoman. I am superwoman for everybody in my life. And you know, how do you? balance being superwoman because obviously when, when you see um, you know superheroes or whatever in the movies they have these superpowers but there's also this element of like they always they always portray there's like that one thing you know like Superman kryptonite absolutely zaps his power you know it's like and for for us like what's your kryptonite what's the thing that completely zaps your power and and leaves you empty and vulnerable and just like you know subject to everything that's happening you know from the outside and mm. you know and how do you deal with that so it, it's it's like oh my god and I didn't want to be seen in that light like I did not want to be seen like you know seemingly you know weak or vulnerable or anything like that it's like and I thought you know I had heard of this mystical thing called burnout I remember I remember the first time I was talking to someone and she said oh I can't stay because I was at an event and she was like I can't stay because I'm going through burnout and adrenal fatigue and I was like that's a thing like that's a thing like I, I didn't even like 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 it, it didn't even register in my mind that that was a thing that could possibly happen you know because in my world it was like now you just keep going and you just keep moving and you know and I could see in her face and in her body language how tired she was and I just thought huh interesting but at the time I, it wasn't like ooh pay attention to this because this is something that could possibly happen to mm. you you know I'm superwoman nothing happens to superwoman you know we are just super women till the end yeah. of time and we're strong aren't we we're strong yeah. we're just like doing it all and, and I kind of um, I tell you what though Margie Curly it was the best thing that ever yeah. happened to me in my life because Amen. actually it's taken like that was in 2012 and um, it's it took at least two years to build myself up again and now I see it as less of a uh, burnout because mm -hmm. it was it was it was that burnout but also it was just it was integration 
um, of everything that I'd learned up until that point. And yeah. it felt like to me as well, because I was very in my masculine, a lot of, on the outside world, I was, I was really in my masculine, go get her, um, doing all the things. But inside, I was feeling very feminine. And, mm -hmm. and so that I couldn't, um, and everybody saw me as this thing, this, this go-getter and this energy woman and, um, but actually inside I just wanted to, to have a bit of a rest really. So I had a little bit of a battle internal, external going on and what, what it was for me when I actually just hit that wall and I couldn't carry on anymore, it was, it felt like a, an, an initiation into the feminine, into that sacred yeah. feminine of just receiving and relaxing and going with the flow. So even though it was um, a little bit scary, there was a part of me that really, really trusted the process. And now I think I've um, I've come into this alignment where I'm mm. I've got I've got that masculine go get in do it. But then I sit back and I allow myself to receive as well. So it's right. it's 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 made me balance myself much more than I was before. And actually I haven't got that same sort of energy, so I just can't keep doing that. And I think one of the things that I've really learned is like who one of the things that that I think made not made me burn out but but I was um not being responsible around was like who I was hanging out with mm. because mm. there's I mean you've probably heard this expression like energy vampires but if you've got people around you that are not quite on the same wavelength as you and you're always trying to um just help them out of situations or listen to them. I think, Curly, you're, you were saying the same sort of thing. That actually, that I know now is what really drains my energy, and I have to take time for myself. I just have to be on my own. Yeah. But, you know, at least, I'd say at least one or two days a week, I just want to be on my own. Yeah. <laughs> Just to be in my own creative space, not surrounded by anybody else, um, and that is what feeds me. And I know that that feeds me. And if if that's not happening for me, which has been a bit like that the last week or two, I'm like quite jangly now. But it's all right because I'm going on holiday tomorrow, <laughs> <laughs> so I can take that time for myself. But. It, it, yeah. I have noticed so much now how that affects me, and I think, gosh, I was in that environment all the time before. Right. I, um, I think that's a wonderful, wonderful um, way to share about what um, burnout can mean, because I think for me, the experience, um, and thank you very much, both of you, for sharing from such a deep place, because that's one of the things that I think is a classic sign that you could be headed towards this thing. Um, you know, when one is so much into superwoman mode that, you know, um, it's a case of, actually, no, I don't need to talk to anyone about this. No, nope, I'm just going to park that feeling for another and focus on this because this makes me feel energized or, you know, yeah. no, no, it's all right. If I can't sleep, oh, no, that's all right. I can work on that then. That's fine. I'm not sleepy. It must mean I've got, you know, I, I, I'm, I can be focused. I can catch another few hours. And for me, I think energetically speaking, um, burnout is about um, bringing the, the whole purpose of this thing energetically called burnout is about bringing you back to center and balancing your life out. So you know, Rebecca, when you talk about I need, it's it's the best thing that happened to me. I think it's like most of the te most terrible experiences that happen in one's life. When we finally get to a point where we feel centered again, we look back and we think, I can certainly say this about mine. Mine was also around the same time as you, Rebecca, which is really interesting. Yeah, mine too. Um, you know, first of all, I was 
just like you, Marjean, I wasn't wanting to tell anyone how bad I was feeling inside. The reason for that is because I wasn't acknowledging it for myself. First right. Before. You know, so how can you vo verbalize or acknowledge to anybody else what you're not even acknowledging to yourself? Number one. Number two, I was um, holding this standard up for myself that was absolute perfection. So guess what? Yes. When I met this standard, I raised it higher. And when I met that standard, I raised it higher. And it's great because I started winning awards and all sorts of things. You know, so I was, I was running the London Marathon. I was with winning professional awards. I was also, like you, Rebecca, I was doing various things uh, professionally, which in of themselves were probably big enough projects to be focusing on alone. But I was doing all of these all at once. And I was yeah, right. I'm going to do it. And on top of that, you know, when people were like people you know I, I talk about these things and people think, oh my god you're so good Curly and they give me something else like yes yes bring it on this could be good for my career or oh you're so lovely let me help you the nurturing side would come out but I think the the other thing that I wanted to bring up was that my experience was um, I was going to say unique, but there's no such thing as a unique experience, right? Um, <laughs> for me, it was um, it came on so slowly because I was in such denial. So uh. every time I started to have a cold, I'd you know take something for it, and I think no, no, it's okay, I'm fine now. And so it was only at the point where it really sort of crashed in that um, I sort of stopped. And for me, it wasn't, um, you know, adrenal fatigue or it wasn't any medically kind of obvious symptom. For me, it was totally emotional, completely emotional. I felt like I was just shriveling more and more and more. And I was getting to the point where I was, I was becoming more and more and more and more sensitive to the smallest little, you know, things. And um, so I thought. So when I was listening to your experiences, for me that was the really interesting. Thing. It wasn't that my body was shutting down so much uh, to to stop me. It was my emotions that were doing it. So I think what's interesting there is that it can show up literally across any one of your life areas. You know, spiritually speaking, mentally, emotionally, or in your physical body, or any one of all of the above. Um, and so energetically, I think that's a really good way of explaining the, this whole thing about, um, for me, burnout is about balance. Mm. And if you look at nature, what happens in nature when things start to get really, really out of balance just on our planet, you know, bushfire. Yes. Burn it out. Volcano, yep. burn it out. Tsunami, wash it out. Yeah, and these are the sorts of things we feel at, feel right. We feel burnt out, washed out, broken down. You know, we're talking earthquake. So nature for me is always a great reference, and that's why I went into energy work for that reason because it's at the core of everything. It's how everything works, and I think um, the other thing for me about burnout is. Um, for me, it made me, it forced me then to look at what does my wheel of life look like? You know, am I just focusing too much on, you know, the physical? Am I giving enough attention right. to the spiritual, the spiritual, if at all? What about relationship? Am I so focused on work that I'm not even looking at relationship? And I think this is the other thing uh, with burnout is... And, and certainly with the clients I work with is they can be doing extremely well in life but they're complete, there's one or two areas of life that are just completely breaking down yeah heartbreaking literally earth shatteringly heartbreaking um, and that's why I think when I was looking at the schedule for the retreat there was a little part of me the totally woman girl in the child part of me that was getting really excited oh my god I really need to do that I need to do that I need to do that as yeah. well you know? and I think it, for me like, I mean, this is my sense of humor right I was thinking right so clearly this must be a really magnificent package for a woman because I'm reacting to it in the moment I can yeah. feel my whole body, my spirit going, yes, yes, yes. 
yeah. I need time for me. I need to be around other women, you know, and women can be, a woman can be a, another woman's best friend. There's nobody like a woman who can nurture another woman. But also, let's face it, in some of the professional circles out there, it can be the complete opposite. Yes. And so I think this is also part of balancing um, burnout is learning to be that really strong, young um, element of yourself and bringing that to life without killing that soft, gentle, kind side that is about, well, you know what, let me help you and I can do this mm -hmm. in a professional way. Yeah. Um, it's very easy to go into a man's world or to go into life and think I've got so many roles and responsibilities that I've got to I've got to ignore this side of myself or I've got mm. to get to the top of this profession I can't be kind to any of the women or you know it's too competitive and things like this so burnout shows up in a lot of ways I think a lot of ways spectacularly so that yeah yeah and, you know, I just wanted to add on to that a little bit because, you know, for, for me, being like that strong, independent powerhouse of a woman, you know, it was, it was almost like um, I was denying that there was the feminine side of myself. You know, so it's like, no, I can do everything a boy can do. I can be just as strong as a boy. I can be just as good as a boy. I can do just as good, you know, just as good as a man can do. I can do, and I can do it better. <clears throat> and it was, it was like I've, I pushed away the feminine side because I thought, oh, well, that feminine stuff, it's all just, you know, it's hokey pokey and it's, and it's weak and it's, you know, oh, I don't really need to pay attention to, you know, my sensuality. I don't need to pay attention to my sexuality. I don't need to pay attention to the soft, nurturing, emotional side of myself. Oh, forget it. Well, you know, learning and teaching and personal growth for the last 10 years, it's like the area that you ignore will be the one that takes you down. So it's like ignoring my feminine side for so long, it was like that was the one that was like, bam. So if you're not going to listen, if you're not going to heed the warnings, if you're not going to actively, you know, seek this balance in this part of yourself, well, I guess we're just going to have to take you down in order to do it, which is exactly what happened, you know, because I never thought, you know, I thought that just you know, getting a mess, massage every once in a while was it. You know, like, ah, oh, that's fine. Every once in a while I'll go and I'll have somebody, you know, do an hour and a half massage. It's like an hour and a half massage to try to undo 10 years of, of being out there achieving and working and doing and doing and doing and, and exercising and being strong and being tough and not showing the emotions. And I was like, yeah, that didn't quite cut it. You know, did not quite get to the heart of it. So, you know, it really it was a hard. You know, and we're not saying that that um, you're going to get burnt out. You're, we're not saying that it's going to happen to you. But we three are living testaments that we never thought it would happen to us. Period. <laughs> You know, and you know, so it can happen. It can happen to anyone, and it's like now, especially more than ever, we're in a time energetically um, where balance is key. Like balance between, like Curly said, you know, when something's out of balance with the earth, oh, a fire happens. Oh, a flood happens. Ooh, something happens to to balance it out. And always with those things that happen. Um, with the earth, whether it's, you know, Mother Nature taking care of things or whether it's, you know, man has created something that, that's going to take care of it, it always brings balance on the other side. There's always this, um, you know, if, if, you know, I don't like to watch the news or anything like that, you know, looking at all of the stuff that's happening in the world today, it's like the good that comes out of it is always about unification, love, you know, be kind to each other, which is all a feminine place. It's all a feminine. Right? Yeah. So it's like, 
that's a little bit about like like that's what leads up to it, you know. And it's like, what does it look like? What does it feel like? What is it like being in it? Um, and for me, just being in it, oh my gosh, you would have thought that like every day I thought, oh my god, am I dying? Am I dying? Am I, you know? And I would think about my daughter, and I would think, oh, you know, am I going to be around for her? Like. Oh, what's happening to me? Because I just didn't know. Like I didn't know. And the thing that really was was hard was until somebody told me, you know, you're just you're in a place of burnout. Because I was going through all of this stress, panic, anxiety, panic attacks. Never thought that I'd ever have a panic attack. And the, and you know when I checked myself into the emergency room in December of 2012 because I thought I was having a heart attack. The doctor said, no, you're not having a heart attack. Have you been under a lot of stress lately? And I went, uh, and I kind of like had to think about it. And my girlfriend who was with me was like, uh, yes. And he said to, to, to me, he goes, you're having a panic attack. And I thought, not me. What? A panic attack? You're kidding. This is what it's like? Wow. This is hard. This is hard. And I had to literally like put the brakes on on everything, like I put the brakes on everything in my life. Um, I couldn't teach. I couldn't be out there. It took everything I had to just take care of myself, to nurture myself, um, to be able to spend the time, the quality time with my daughter when it was my, you know, time to have her um, because she lives with her dad. It's like it took everything for me to focus on myself to be able to actually just pop myself up and and like like Becky said you know it took me it took me two years it took me two years of really going inside and focusing on on me and seeking advice from from you know others seeking the like what's gonna bring me out of this you know, and the first thing was, accept that you're in it. <laughs> and I was like, ooh, ooh, oh, I don't know if I can do that. That's the work that has to be done. Is just, this is where I'm at, and it's okay. Yeah, I'm not broken. I'm not broken. I'm just having an experience, and it's all this other stuff that's led up to it, and. You're going to, you know, it was like the universe said to me, you're going to get in touch with your emotions and your feelings, and it's now. Like, it's now. What are you feeling? It's now. So I, I was thinking about how do we avoid that in the first place? And right. there's quite a few telltale signs before you actually get to that space. Um, um, and there's... One of them is, are you getting ill more often? And <laughs> you normally everybody has like a go-to illness. Yeah. Whether it's a cold, whether it's cystitis, you know, what, whatever it is, like there's something that you normally get when you're feeling run down. So, it, so you get in that more often? Yeah. Are you putting off number two? Kind of. Are you putting off? You you keep wanting, thinking. All oh, right, I, I need to go and do that to look after myself. But I just need to finish this first. I need to go on holiday. I need to go and call my girlfriend. I need. Yeah. I need to go and get in the bath. Do you know what I mean? And just have a soak. Are, are you putting off those little? Voices, because you're always chasing something that's going to happen in the future, rather being in than being in the present moment. Yeah. So, are you putting off those things? Are you fed up with what you're doing, but you can't really see the way out because you've got bills to pay, you've got to look after this, you've got to, everything that there's always signs, but um, that totally. lead up to burnout. And if you do not follow them, just like what you said. Margin, if you don't listen to them, listen to yourself, then <laughs> the universe is going to put you on your ass anyway. Yeah. 
and then you know you do have to go through that feeling of, of thinking you're dying because you are you're you're dying right. into the old way of life to be reborn into the new yeah and um, so you could do that as a conscious decision by making those small changes every day in your life um, rather than waiting for something else to come along and do it for you. Yeah. And so one of the things that um, I always find really useful and I work with with lots of women and, and men is like if you think about what really you love doing in your life. So do you love going out into nature? Do you love going to the movies? Do you love dancing? That's one of my go-tos. You know, what is it that you really love doing and then just start doing that on a regular basis? Because they're the things that will stop you from getting to that burnout space. Yeah. And um, yeah, and I, I think we were going to talk a little bit about yeah what we've done to recover from that space. So so what are your go-to things, Marjean? <laughs> my my go-to things. One of the like what you just said. Like I had to start. Um, I had to start really doing and getting back to the things that I really loved. Yeah. Like I really loved and what I had realized that I had done is I had shut down like I had shut down like all of my lower chakras sexually like I had just shut down sexually like I had no you know if we think about it on a purely biological level how we're created it's like where does life come from it's like when you have a baby it comes from your womb you know, it's like all of those lower chakras, all of that creative energy, you know, if you know anything about the, the energetics of the body and, 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 you know, how the chakras work, you know, those first three chakras, the base, you know, the, the, uh, the first, second, and third chakras are all about your power and your energy and, you know, and how you're grounded in the world. And I was completely not grounded. It's like everything was, was like that I was doing is like from the neck up. Like, oh, I think I should be doing this. I've got to be doing this. And let me just go, 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 do this. You know, and, and then I'd have another thought. Oh, and then if I just do this, and then if I just do this, and then da, da, da. You know, and then my lower, you know, my chakra body was just like, ugh, I'm done. So one of the things that I started doing, like I love dancing as well. So I started going back to dance class. And it really started helping me get more in touch with my body, like what was really happening with it, and just accepting that, you know, it hurt. My body was hurting. Um, I started going uh, outside and spending time just being outside more. Um, I started really getting more into my sensuality and my sexuality and, and getting the, increasing the energy um, in those places through um, a sacred you know, sexual practice. And I like it was the thing that got me back into feeling better, into feeling good. Because when I first started, you know, this practice, this this partnered practice, I was like, I was empty. I was so completely empty. And they, you know, the managers in this system were able to say to me, like, you're empty. Like you're empty. You just need to be filled up. And so I had to go through and look at, okay, what are the things that are going to fill me up? And that was one of the things that was filling me up. And just not doing anything was filling me up. Letting other people support me was helping to fill me up. And, you know, at the time, it's like, you know, everyone's like, oh, just think positive, think positive. It's hard to think positive when your body is in such a state of exhaustion like you don't even have the energy to have a positive thought mm -hmm. so I had to put that energy back into my body and it was just through that practice you know and really getting into extreme self care mm -hmm. which we'll we'll talk about in our you know next week in our in our you know Google Hangout but 
I had to get selfish. I had to think about me because I was constantly always thinking like, well, huh, what can I do for somebody else? Oh, I'll just have to do something for something else. Oh, I'll do something for somebody else. I'll do something, you know, everybody always says, you know, give more, give more, give more. I didn't have anything to give. I just didn't have anything to give. But the dance for sure was a huge, um, you know, uh, opener for me energetically to get back into my body because I could just move my body and start to like just kind of slowly like stretch and you know get into the rhythm and let the music just move through me. I um, one of the other things I watched funny videos like I was constantly on YouTube looking for funny videos because I thought I just have to laugh like I need to laugh. I spent two years like not laughing, so I was like, I gotta laugh. I just need to laugh. So I'd find, you know, you know, whether it was a movie or a video clip or you know something silly or you know, a, a cat video, dog video, <laughs> you know, uh, anything like that to just just really start putting that putting the positive on the external back into my body. And at the same time, working the practice that was working on the, the energetics of the internal to get the internal mechanisms, you know, going. And I really did a lot of um, uh, extreme self-care in the way of food, like, like making sure that the food that I was eating was supporting um, the the nourishment of my body um, and getting my adrenals back online because my adrenals were shot. They were absolutely shot and I did a lot of um, herbal therapy to, to get my adrenals nourished again so that my adrenals could actually function which you know gives you energy. So that was those are some of my go-to's and, and I did do a lot of massage like it was like a lot of massage. I was living in LA at the time, so it was really easy to find. You know, uh, I had this go-to place, Happy Feet, and it was a, it's a you know Chinese massage where I could get an hour and a half massage for like thirty nine dollars, and I was like, yep, I'm gonna spend that money every single week. Yeah, every week. I'm doing it every week. I'm going to get an hour and a half massage just to work the kinks out of my body. That, yeah. That's a really, really, um, it's a comprehensive journey. It's, it's perfect because um, my experience has been um, similar actually. And um, it's true actually. If, if so, one of the things that I would say to people is have a look at your week, you know, look back mm -hmm. on the last two or three or four weeks and look at where you've been focusing your time. Not yeah. just physically, but up here too, and and here, you know. Yeah. Where is where is your focus been, and how stressed have you been feeling? Have you been feeling more stressed about things that you wouldn't have normally felt stressed about, or you know, do you wake, open your eyes in the morning and feel tired emotionally straight away at the thought of the day ahead of you? Yeah. You know, and. Um, for me, it's things like you know sleeplessness, and I was having my face, my symptoms were things like my hair started falling out, and it sounds like well, so what? Because you you know the rest of you is fine, but you know what? For me, it was the end of the world. It's like oh my god, I'm going to go bald, or I'm going to go this, right. oh, look hideous, and um, you know it's. Um, for me, um, the things that in the end um, have really, really helped massively are, first of all, learning to be truthful and authentic with people about what's really mm -hmm. going on with me and being able to ask people for help. Now, this is still a work in progress to some degree. Yeah. You know, this whole thing of being able to ask for help, uh, and most people, in fact, there isn't, there hasn't been anybody I've come across that has not said to me, oh, Curly, you're a really girly girl, you know, and you're so feminine and everything, but you know what? I've got, I've got exactly the same thing going on. I find it really tough to ask for help. And yeah. um, 
I do it a lot more and it's the nicest thing in the world. Just, I've actually found that, you know, as nice as it is and rewarding as it is for me to help somebody else, it's actually really nice to ask somebody for help and have that tight feeling just as you're about to ask and then finally get the words out and then they say, oh yeah, sure, I'd love to do that for you. And you're just like, oh my God, that's so nice. That wasn't hard at all. And it yeah. didn't feel strange. But the pre-thoughts and feelings coming up to actually making the ask be, for me, were horrifically powerful. Um, the other things for me um, have been things around, um, I've now come to the point where I, um, I give myself religiously, I give myself now two days off consecutively. Mm -hmm. But there was a point in time where I used to think, half day off, no, I can't do that. Right. <laughs> and, and it wasn't it wasn't because it was less about what I had to do because I can be that efficient and um, less about that more about the feelings of guilt sitting still or just indulging in myself and Margie you used a word which I think it's worth saying a few words about which is selfish you learn to be selfish well selfish this one word has such a has had such a difficult press about it. People, yes. You, this word selfish is used to attack people. It's used to paint them as the devil. But just look at the words themselves, selfish. Now, when I say to somebody, it will it'll be in about 10 minutes-ish, I don't suddenly think, oh, my God, I'm terrible person. Right, but, right, right. But... When I say 10 p.m. ish, all it's all the meaning of that is quite simply it's 10 p.m. and the focus is around that. This give or take. Give or yes. take. Right? So actually, selfish is not a bad thing. All it's saying is self, focus on self, give or take, yes. around about, right? And actually, when we look at nature and we look at natural processes, um, Forgive me if I've gone a little bit onto my soapbox, but I'm so it, it really excites me when I can share stuff like this. You know, you look at these things and you look at the natural processes. When you get an when you get a hole and that hole is complete, so whether it's a flower or a bee, you know, and it's working in perfect working perfectly as it should, it does because it it flourishes from the inside out right mm -hmm. it and so this burnout is actually um and recovery from burnout or prevention of burning it's all the same thing really all of it is focusing you back onto you, onto, so for onto me, you. i do things like you know i have me time i have like yes. you, I'm, I've learnt I've learnt to laugh at anything and everything. And in fact, you know what? You get so much more done. You have yes. far better <laughs> inspired ideas when you're having fun. Like these days, I don't do anything unless there's fun involved. Yeah, I don't even go there. And I tell people straight, you know, when I go into a corporate setting and I say, they'll tell me, "Oh, can you do this, that, and the other?" And I'll say, "Sorry, no, can do." And they'll sort of look at me like, "Yeah, but, right. but, but," and I'll say, "Well, look." If you want people to do, be their best, perform their highest, they need to be having a good time. They need to be inspired. Yeah. They need to be happy. And then, totally. then, they're gonna, then they're not going to just do the job at hand. They're going to do 10 times more. And it's going to feel completely easy. You know, yeah. so I do, so what do I do? I have me time. I have a long list of things that I love doing, and some of them right. sound really, really s small. Like I love to look at the sunset or the sunrise, or just at the sky. Oh, yeah, I just so love to stop yeah. where I am and look up at the sky. And who yeah. doesn't have access to the sky? Even a stormy yeah. sky has beauty within it, right? So I like things like this. I'm quite arty farty, if you like. So I like to go to the theatre. I like to watch movies. I like to read books. And movement is something else you both talked about, which I thought was really, really interesting as well, because 
energetically speaking, the reason why movement is such a great thing, have you noticed when you sit at a desk and you have a phone call, you can feel your body going like this as yeah. time goes by, right? Yawning, this, that, and the other, and yeah. you know, wondering, etc. But if you put your, now these aren't plugged into anything, so don't be alarmed, right? So if you put your headphones on and get onto the call or, you know, hold up your handset and start walking around, oh my God, it's like the energy just grows and grows in that conversation, right? The re so, the re so the movement thing is basically, energetically speaking, it's connecting, connecting your physical body up with your spiritual, yeah. right through all your chakras, and um, you know your mental and emotional faculties and processes, and it's getting them all working because you know bottom line, this is an engine. It's mm -hmm. a biological, spiritual, completely, in um, energetic engine. It's all about movement. You know, if you look at a person, and you look through the the, the most powerful microscope down through the cells and atoms and nucleus and everything. All you've got is movement, right? Vibration. Movement. We are meant to be in movement. So this is why, whether it's running, walking, jumping up and down on a trampoline, you know, laughing or dancing, whatever it be, movement is always going to help every single person. And actually, have you noticed you can be so tired, but when you're doing the right sort of movement, the one you enjoy, it's like your yeah. energy is back like that. Yeah. 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 It's, so, it's sort of like lubrication for the system. Yeah. You know? An engine is an engine because yeah. it's about moving parts coming together and its whole beingness, its whole purpose for existence is movement. It's to yes. do, it's to process, it's to move. Totally. And that's what we are. Yeah. You know, we went from four legs up to two, which speeded us up in a different kind of way. Right. And, you know, um, so for me, it's about um, at every point in time, every single day, I think about, you know, not just when, when I'm going on holiday every three months or four months or however often people do. For me, it's about putting in things daily. Yes. And consistently and then making sure that it's sustainable because you know what yeah you can listen to this Google hangout and think oh my god that's it I'm gonna cut out everything for the next week clear my diary and do some self-care and then you go straight back into that previous template right no good put yeah. something in step by step slowly that's sustainable and actually this is the reason why I was so excited about the retreat even though I'm part of facilitating it's because this is what it's this is a, what it's about, right? It's about yeah. bringing women together, connecting everyone up. Because that's the other thing is when burnout and things like this happen, we become insular. It's like we don't want to interact with anybody else. And when your body's breaking down or you're spiritually breaking down, it's the very thing that you really need to do that you feel the most resistance to. Yeah. You know? So, for Big example, time. if you need water like anything, guess what? You'll be like, no, I'll have it later. Um, or have you noticed how when somebody's really, really busy and they need to go, it's a really, probably not a ladylike example, so pardon me, but have you, how many of us have been sat at a desk or something going like this because we need to go to the loo? And we're like, yeah. no, I'll wait till lunchtime. No, oh, no. Yeah, I'll Can wait until the last possible yeah. moment. The last yeah. possible moment. I won't do it until I absolutely right. have to. Oh, yeah. my God. And then when you yeah. finally go to do what nature has asked you to do hours ago, it's not the easiest of processes. The flow takes a while. Right, yeah. 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 This yeah. is exactly what happens it's with things true. like burnout. So, you know, your worst um, expression of burnout is when you just literally collapse as, you know, you, you have so, both of you have so beautifully shared. Um, and, this, um, and the lesser expressions can be just in a single day where you get to the end of the day and you fall into bed exhausted. Or, you're, yeah. or you get to lunch at lunchtime and you have to go to the ladies just because I can't take it anymore, I'm so overwhelmed. Or you start to have a panic attack or you know things like that 
Um, so for me, it's about daily, consistent, sustainable. Sustainable is a key thing. Yes, exactly. And sustainable and, and consistent because it's easy to do a one-off. It's easy to do a one-off. It's easy to just say, oh, I'll do it once. And that doesn't, it doesn't work because it'll work in the moment, but not, it's not long-term and sustainable, which is why um, we're going to wrap it up now um, because we've got a few minutes left, but we're going to wrap it up. But the last thing we're going to leave you with is we're going to talk about um, you know, bouncing, like bouncing back. How do you bounce back? We've, ta we've given you lots of information of you know, some of the things that you need to start focusing on. Um, and part of why we've created this retreat, um, we've got a, uh, the Power of the Goddess, is a, it's, a, it's a live event company that we put on very highly transformational um, workshops and retreats and, and courses. And we've got a retreat coming up in Italy in September. And part of the reason the three of us have you know, you know, come up with this and created this and are putting this together and offering this out is so that people, um, women, this is for women, it's just for women this one, sorry guys, but so that women have a place to go so that they can take time out for themselves because we know how important it is to take time out from the hustle and the bustle of, da of your daily life. It's, it's important to have a supportive, strong environment where all you're required to do is just show up and be open to receiving, open to being nurtured, open to yes, relaxing and letting go and learning some of the things that will actually fill you back up and help you to sustain on a daily level. Um, our next hangout, we're going to talk about one of the things that, that will be instrumental and key. Um, it's it's uh, next week, um, let's see, what's the date of that, Curly? Are we on the twenty fourth? The twenty fourth. It's, it's not next Sunday. week. It's the, it's the twenty fourth. It's a Monday. Um, but we're go is it is it Sunday? Mm -hmm. Sunday. Sunday the twenty fourth. We're going to talk about self care because that's going to be a very big key in either preventing burnout or bouncing back from burnout or getting yourself out of burnout. Um, Self-care is going to be key. So visit us on our website at powerofthegoddess.com. We have the Power of the Goddess on Facebook. We have our Italian Paradise Retreat on Facebook as well. It's on the events. You can search it on um, Facebook so that you can come and check it out. Give yourself the opportunity to learn some, school, some skills and some tools um, and actually get into practicing receiving during that five days of the retreat so that you can uh, be filled back up and put you first. A lot of times, um, I know even for myself, I don't necessarily say, oh, I got to put, you know, I'm going to put five days aside for me to just go and be honored, to be nurtured, to be loved um, in a space that, that is safe, it's geared towards it. Um, you know, I have to really like sit down and go, oh, I need to go do this for myself, you know, because we feel guilty for taking time for us. We feel like it's indulgence. We feel like it's, you know, it's like it's not okay. It's like, oh, what, I'm going to leave my kids for five days? Yeah, you're going to leave your kids for five days. I'm going to leave my partner for five days? Yeah, you're going to leave your partner for five days. Unless your partner happens to be a woman and you want to bring them with you so that both of you get the benefits, right? Um, you know, oh, I'm going to leave my job for five days. I'm gonna, oh, I'm an entrepreneur. I can't leave my business for five days. If you're an entrepreneur, especially you're a professional woman, you have your own business, you need to take those five days for yourself. Because otherwise, if you don't take those five days for yourself, guess what? Becky, three months. Marjean, a year on her back. You know, Curly, you know, how long, how long was it, Curly, that it took you to like, not do anything. Okay, so I ended up taking six months out. Six I wasn't months. on my back, but you know what? Might as well have been professionally speaking. Yeah. So, and can I just say, Margin, can I just say very quickly, I think for me the really exciting thing about the retreat is this is an opportunity to meet, form some really close relationships yes. with other women who are going to be there for you ongoingly. And just remember and find who am I, because that's what we lose, don't we? When we yeah. get to who am oh. I? Who am I? Yeah. 
So it's all about you, five days. Visit us on the web, powerofthegoddess.com. Thank you for being with us today. Um, thank you for watching this broadcast. If anyone's, you know, for those of you who are watching it after, um, is it, uh, the date today is July 13th. So we've got a special on the retreat price uh, up until the 21st of July. So if you're, you're watching this after the first 21st of July, um, the price has gone up. Um, to our regular price, but join us. You you will be honored. You will be loved. You will be nurtured. And if the retreat, if you're watching this after the retreat has already ended and passed, um, visit us on the web at powerofthegoddess.com for any upcoming events that we might have. Have an amazing day, everybody. Thanks for joining us.